Time travel is a fascinating subject, especially for geeks like me because I fantasize about going back in time and making things right. Reliving things like standing up to the bully who made my life hell in third grade. Or asking that beautiful girl out on a date in high school that I was so terrified to even go near. Pretty wishful fantasies, don't you think? Or are they? So, is time travel possible? Of course it is. Into the future. You and I are traveling in time right now, into the future. And traveling into the far future also is a reality using Einstein's principle of time dilation, when you travel at high speeds or are near a really high gravity source. If you travel at nearly the speed of light, your time could slow so much that a day for you may be 10 years on Earth. After five days of high-speed travel, you could be 50 years into the future back on Earth. This is depicted somewhat accurately in the movie Interstellar. What doesn't appear to be possible is travel into the past. So if you did travel into the future, you wouldn't be able to come back to your previous time. Time travel into the past presents paradoxes, the most famous of which is the grandfather paradox, where a traveler goes back in time and murders his own grandfather. This alters the course of history in a way that the traveler couldn't have been born to travel back in time to kill his grandfather. Movies like The Terminator make this into an epic adventure. These paradoxes cannot exist in nature, according to the Hawking Chronology Protection Conjecture. So this idea of time travel as your current self is likely not possible. However, going back to a past version of yourself cannot be ruled out. This means that using any technology to go back to your past would bring you back to a younger version of yourself but you would not know that you had traveled back in time. The events that took place during that earlier time would play out exactly as they did before. Now, this would not be like the movies, and it wouldn't be much fun because you would just be reliving a past that would be no different. You would simply relive it exactly as you did before. You could not change anything because it is already written in stone, and no information or knowledge would have traveled back with you. It turns out that this type of travel back in time is theoretically possible, and there are three methods to do this. One method was proposed just recently in December of 2018 by Carolyn Mallory, a PhD student at the University of Massachusetts Dartmouth. Here's how it works. You would take two long spaceships and park them in parallel. One car moves forward really fast while the other is parked. A time loop forms between the two cars such that space and time folds in on itself. Now there is one additional requirement. You need to have a special kind of matter in the two cars, consisting of infinite density. In other words, you would need a bare and observable singularity. You know, a simple thing like what's at the center of black holes. A point in space with such a huge density that it breaks through the fabric of space and time. Of course, we don't have a way to create such a singularity or know whether this kind of singularity even exists. So let's try method number two. Professor Ben Tippett at the University of British Columbia worked out a theoretical way you could travel back in time. His math is based on Einstein's theory of relativity. Since massive objects can bend space and time, they cause the space-time fabric to curve. His time machine uses this concept, bending the space of space and time to an extreme degree such that it forms a circle instead of just a bent fabric. That circle could take us back in time. Seems easy enough. So what's the catch? Well, to build his time machine, we would need a theoretical particle known as negative matter. This exotic form of matter is only theoretical because it hasn't been discovered. Tippett calls his time machine Traversable A-Causal Retrograde Domain in Spacetime, or TARDIS. Get it from Doctor Who? Finally, there's a method number three from the master himself, Einstein, who said that if it were possible to travel faster than the speed of light, then it would be equivalent to traveling back in time. It turns out that Einstein's equations apply to speeds slower than the speed of light, as well as speeds faster than the speed of light. They just break down at the speed of light. In fact, the reason we are seemingly limited to stay below the speed of light is because as you approach the speed of light, according to his equations, time slows down, and it stops completely at the speed of light and forms a singularity. However, if you could somehow break this speed barrier, like Chuck Yeager broke the sound barrier, then you would find yourself traveling back in time. There's nothing in Einstein's equations that precludes the backward trajectory of time. 
and the equations of physics would apply whether time is flowing forward or backward. So, can we travel back in time to relive our past or make things right? All we need is to get a hold of a couple of singularities or a couple of grams of negative matter or warp technology. Or, let's make it really simple. How about someone from the future, where I'm sure they've figured this out, could come back and show us how to build a time machine? That would sure make my day. So what if that causes a paradox and destroys the world? At least I would get to kick that third grader bully's ass. Thank <laughs> you.